Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jim, and uh, I'm going to be playing some of the Ultimate Alliance. Uh, Josh and Mike have moved on to a couple different playthroughs. Um, I was actually, I was going to do this with Kyle or Lucio, but unfortunately, I don't know who, Marvel, Activision, whoever, decided to uh, take down the patch or whatever it is that lets you play with the downloadable characters and whatnot. So uh, we couldn't play it online, so there's no way we could film it together, unfortunately. Kyle will be uh, coming in for Ultimate Alliance 2, which will be up fairly soon. But uh, I just, I love this game so much, I didn't want it to go unfinished. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go solo mission on this for, uh, for once. This may happen more often, I, I don't know yet. It just depends how I do by myself, so... I'll give it my best shot and uh, we're going to see how this goes, okay? Uh, I switched up the teams a little bit. I don't have you know, quite the same team that we had before. This is also the worst part of the game. I'm just saying. It's the Atlantis mission. It sucks balls, so bear with me here. You'll probably see uh, plenty of hate on it for, <laughs> for the next uh, I don't know, hour or however long it takes me to beat this. Um, but yeah, so I switched up the teams. I, uh, I put Luke Cage out there because I'm actually I'm watching the Jessica Jones show right now. It's fucking really, really good. Uh, it's very dark. It's surprisingly dark and really kind of surprisingly like graphic as far as like... Like there's one part where Luke and Jessica are fucking. I mean, they're like, they're fucking. And this is a Marvel show and they are fucking each other's brains out <laughs> and of course it's great at the end because Luke's just like sweet Christmas and it's just that's fucking hysterical um, but yeah I mean they're like they're fucking and like it's pretty like it's fairly graphic I mean it's not quite like Game of Thrones HBO fucking but it's pretty you know it's pretty graphic it's like um, Sons of Anarchy level fucking let's call it that anybody who watched Sons of Anarchy you know exactly what I'm talking about Sons of Anarchy fucking. Not quite tits and not quite, you know, anything else, but a whole lot of, uh, you know, a whole lot of stuff going on there. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in the Marvel shows, if you liked Daredevil, if you're a fan of Luke Cage, fucking check the show out. It's really good. The, um, the Purple Man is an excellent villain. Uh, people are saying that he's actually rivaling the Heath Ledger Joker. I don't know if I'd go that far. He is really, really good, though. He's very fucking creepy. The guy that plays him is excellent. And his powers are pretty amazing. I mean, he's essentially... Um, for my anime fans out there, for anybody that watched Bleach, anybody who knows Aizen, uh, yeah, his powers are basically that. He can basically influence what you're doing. Like, he just... His pheromones, once you get, like, a scent of his pheromones... Whatever he says, he can pretty much just make you do. If he's like, kill yourself, you have to kill yourself. That's just the way it is. Unless it's like somebody that's got like massive mental blocking powers like Professor X or the Hulk or Wolverine or something like that. I doubt Wolverine could actually kill himself even if he wanted to. It'd probably be very difficult. Um, but yeah, really solid show. Definitely uh, something to check out. The Daredevil show is also really good. Um, Anybody who's into that, you know, into Marvel, I would say it's definitely worth the price of admission. You know, I don't know what, what's Netflix now, like ten bucks a month or something like that. I, I forget. I haven't really paid attention too much. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely say it'd be worth at least you know marathoning that one time. It's really they're both pretty good. Um, also, there's going to be a Luke Cage show coming out. It looks pretty good. The uh, the same guy that's in Jessica Jones is going to be playing him, which that's awesome for continuity. Uh, then they're supposed to do an Iron Fist show, which Iron Fist is really cool. Uh, Daredevil Season 2 is going to be coming out next year. And um, I guess they're going to do The Defenders after that, which is, you know, like their whole little group together. I'm waiting, I'm hoping that we see Spider-Man somewhere in there. I really want to see Spider-Man somewhere. He's connected to all these heroes. He's a street-level superhero in New York. Bet he, like Spider-Man's best buddies with Daredevil. They're they're very close. Um, he's also he's good friends with Luke Cage. 
I, I would love to see him just in there. Even if it's just a cameo, I'd still love to see it because Spider-Man's like pretty much my favorite superhero, not including some characters from like anime and stuff. So not including like Goku. <laughs> yeah, he's it's pretty much Spider-Man. Um, also, <laughs> totally got sidetracked here. Um, I swear. Characters, you know, we got Luke Cage out there. We got Spider-Man. We got Spider. Well, that's Spider Woman, but uh, I use the Spider Girl costume because it's awesome. Um, for those who don't know who Spider Girl is, that would be Mayday Parker, which uh, is Spider Man's daughter from another universe between him and Mary Jane. Um, she's actually the one that I believe in the regular 616 universe, she was a stillbirth and she died, which is extremely unfortunate. Um, she doesn't play like Spider. Girl would or like Spider Man would. She plays like Spider Woman, but it's just it's a really cool costume. It's the worst costume, but I love it so much. I just I use it anyway, just for shits and giggles. Uh, I put Iron Man out there because he has one of the best moves in the game. And actually, I'll show you that right now. This move right here, you see, it's uh, it's the move I got set to X, where it's um, like two little light bars coming off of one. It's this. This move is called Energy Reroute, and basically what it does is it gives you. Uh, practically infinite um, superpower moves so you team this with somebody like Silver Surfer or Cyclops and pretty much they'll never run out of energy and you could just annihilate anything um, one of the other things I did is I switched it over to hard mode because you know I'm just running it by myself so I might as well just play on the hardest difficulty I played this game enough to uh, to be able to still do it so that's what I decided to do and you know um, Mike is uh, Mike and Josh are going to be Josh is going to continue Dark Souls and uh, Mike's I think we're going to switch over and we're going to do some punch out. All three of us are going to do punch out together, but yeah, that's going to be our uh, next big project. Uh, that's punch out on the Wii, uh, not the not the original NES because unfortunately I don't know where my NES is at the moment. Um, that's why we haven't done any like old 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 NES games on here yet. Um, I promise though they will be coming eventually they're, they're definitely gonna be here um, and Josh is gonna be uh, if he doesn't continue Dark Souls we might move on to Bloodborne we're not a hundred percent sure um, Dark Souls has been giving me a lot of trouble for some reason when I'm trying to record it um, the audio just acts weird sometimes I don't know why particularly um, you know I'm not the be the most knowledgeable at this whole thing since we just started and stuff um, but we will uh, we'll give it a try. If we can do Dark Souls, we'll do Dark Souls. If not, we'll bring we'll bring out some Bloodborne, which would probably be more awesome because all of us can play. Because I'm not horrible at Bloodborne. I'm fucking god awful at Dark Souls. But Bloodborne, uh, I'm okay. I'm not too bad. I was okay enough to beat the game. I cannot beat it on uh, what was uh, New Game Plus mode. That shit is fucking impossible. I got to uh, parl the Dark Beast and I wanted to cry. It was the worst. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we should be, uh, we should be doing that real soon. Uh, Kyle is, uh, we're playing Ultimate Alliance 2. Um, I'm probably gonna wait on that to release that till I'm done doing this, but, you know, luckily I can do this by myself, so it should be, you know, really, really quick. Um, we're also doing Dead Rising off the record, if anybody had saw the first episode. Um, second episode will be coming out probably sometime later this week. Um around the Thanksgiving area let's let's call it that that's the best way to uh, best way to think of it around the Thanksgiving area uh, the second Dead Rising 2 off the record will come out and uh, you guys will see the absolute ridiculousness uh, that Kyle has in store for you with his completely inane costumes and he, I think he may make me rip out my hair by the end of the episode I, I I'm gonna lose all my luxurious hair. It's gonna be horrible. I'm gonna be walking around bald, and I look fucking terrible bald. I want you all to know that. Just you know, FYI for personal knowledge and use, I look fucking horrible bald. I have a weird age-shaped head. Damn, it's, it's cool though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Ultimate Alliance. I know I haven't spoke about this game hardly at all. I've just been sidetracked with a bunch of other weird shit. Um, but yeah, so Luke Cage is out there, and uh, you know. He's got this uh, muscly shirt going on, this 1970s yellow shirt. Actually, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest. I really like the guy that plays Luke Cage in the uh, Jessica Jones show. I'm still a little bitter about it because 
there's one person where I was always like, man, if they ever do anything Luke Cage related, it's got to be this guy because he just looks so spot on for the character. Uh, bet everybody might be able to guess who it is. Uh, it's Dwayne Johnson. It's, it's The Rock. Like, The Rock is like the spitting image of Luke Cage, especially now that he's like so massively jacked. Like, The Rock in Painting Game, you look at that guy, you're like, yeah, fucking Luke Cage. He's got, like, the beard for it at the time. He's got the bald head. Like, he's pretty much the spitting image of Luke Cage. And I really, really wanted to see that. I kept hoping. I was like, come on, just put Luke in one of the movies and have him be The Rock. That would be so fucking awesome. But, unfortunately, it never happened. Um, I, I think this guy is... He's actually he's really good at it, so I'm not hating on it too bad. Um, if they do a movie and they bring him into the movie as Luke Cage, I'm not going to be upset. I'd still I'd love to see The Rock, but I wouldn't be upset with it. Um, I actually hope that uh, the guy that they got to do Daredevil, Charlie Cox, is I believe his name. I really hope that, and as far as I've heard, it is a possibility. If uh, Daredevil happens to make an appearance in any of the Marvel movies, it's going to be him, which that's awesome. I'm really, really hyped about that. He's an excellent Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> I like Ben Affleck. Don't get me wrong. I'm going I'm to say that. I like Ben Affleck. He's been in some really good movies. You know, Gone Girl is excellent. I really like that. Um, Argo won the Academy Award. I'm not saying it's the best movie I've ever seen or anything, but it's it's good. It's it's a decent movie. It's it was entertaining, which is most more than I could say for a lot of Academy Award nominated movies. A lot of times I'm like, this is fucking dumb. I don't really want to watch this. Um, and sometimes I get some shit from it. Like I, I know uh, when Life of Pi came out, I really hated that, and Lucio fucking loved that movie. <laughs> we got into a big like, I mean not like an argument or like. He's like one of my best friends, but we we got into like a big, huge discussion, debate about it. I'm like, damn, this movie is fucking boring. He's like, shut up. I was like, oh, dude, it's fucking boring. I just, I, it was not for me. It was not for me. Um, Birdman, when I first watched Birdman, I thought it was really stupid. And then uh, it took me a while to have that one warm up to me. Um, like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is dumb. And then I started really thinking about it. I was like, oh, my God, this is basically about Michael Keaton's career. I was like, that's fucking awesome. And um, and I love Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton's awesome. I heard there's a possibility of a Beetlejuice, too. I'm fucking stoked for that. I cannot fucking wait to see that. If that actually is true and that comes out, I, oh, my God, I'm going to shit my pants, probably. Because Beetlejuice is... I fucking love that movie. It's a great movie. So much fun. So much nostalgia. Um, actually, the really crazy thing... Um, I don't know if anybody knows about it, but... Like, I guess Beetlejuice was drastically changed from the original script. Um, if anybody gets a chance, check that shit out. Look up, like, the original script for Beetlejuice. It's fucked up, man. Like, it's really fucked up. Like, really, really fucked up. Like, I guess instead of, like, the rotten corpse look that I kind of think they gave Beetlejuice, he was supposed to just be, like, a um, very short, like, Middle Eastern type of man. Uh, kind of like the Oompa Loompas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, and I, I guess it's like... He's supposed to be like a not like a, just a ghost or you know a paranormal exorcist or whatever. Uh, or mono. <laughs> um, I guess he was actually supposed to be like um, a demon or something like that. And instead of just wanting to like marry Lydia, he wanted to rape her. And I think he murders like Lydia has a little sister, and I think he fucking kills her. He turns into like a. Uh, like a squirrel, like a rabid squirrel or something, and he fucking like mauls her into goo. I'm like, oh my god, this is a drastically different movie. Um, I guess the uh, the scene with the Maitlands when they die at the beginning. I mean, fucking spoilers. Like, if you haven't seen Beetlejuice, my god, come on, man, you you have to have seen Beetlejuice. Um, but yeah, when the Maitlands die at the beginning, I guess. Um, 
Barbara's arm was like it was supposed to be a lot more graphic. Just let's face it, original version, it's not graphic in any way, shape, or form. Actually, half of you will probably be looking at it and saying, "How the fuck does this actually kill him?" You know, like it's really shallow. Can they just like you know get out and swim or something? It's it's weird. But um, I guess uh, in the original version, it was supposed to be a lot more graphic, and something was supposed to crush Barbara's arm and like take her arm off or something. Um, and there's a little nod to that in the regular, normal version of the movie, in which she says her arm feels cold or numb or something like that. And that's supposed to be like an original uh, nod to the original, uh, original thought of what was going to happen. I was like, that's really fucking cool. It's interesting to like look behind movies sometimes. It, uh, it can be really, you know, really fun to find out about behind the scenes stuff, like. I know, like, a lot of times deleted scenes, a lot of them suck and they're deleted for a reason, but there's been a few. Um, I like the deleted scenes from Terminator 2. I think um, a lot of them actually add to the story, especially, like, the one with Reese and uh, <laughs> the one where Arnold smiles. Yeah, it turned into a joke in Terminator Genesis, like, even more so, but uh, that was really funny. Um, just a lot of stuff from Terminator 2. The only one I didn't like was the... Uh, the fact that he figured out Sarah and the T-1000 were, you know, the T-1000 was impersonating Sarah because of its feet sticking to the metal ground. I was like, no, that's fucking, that's dumb. Because that doesn't happen anywhere else in the movie. Um, but that one was really good. And uh, Shameless, if anybody watches Shameless, Shameless is an awesome series. I'm talking about the American one, not the British one. British one's good. Uh, I just, I watched the American one first, so I, I like it a little bit better. But, uh... There's one scene, and it's really, it cements one of the characters as a, because there's kind of this thing, like, there's this character, and he turns into kind of a fucking bastard in the uh, third season, and, like, that scene, it's in the deleted scene in the first season, it really just, like, shows how much he cares for his love interest in the show, and I was like, man, this scene should have still been in here. It's amazing. It's um, it's him, and he's talking to. He, he breaks into his house, and he's stealing money from his parents. And he talks to his mother, and she she talks to him about about the girl, about the love interest. And he's just like, it's a really genuine scene. And you're like, oh my god, he fucking really cares for her so much. And you just you don't really get that. I mean, you know, sure, you think he cares most of the movie, or most of the show, but it's like, that was such a powerful scene. I was like, man, why did you take that out? That was so good. But, you know, alas, sometimes it happens. Budget cuts, running time issues. They just didn't like the scene. A lot of different possibilities, man. Uh, and actually, thank you for staying with me while I'm rambling. I got a little save point over here. And uh, I think I'm going to take this to the next episode.